Hello, hello, hello. It's Nikki. How you doing? Welcome to my third podcast. Today, I am super pumped to talk to my guest, Vicki Gunvalson from the Real Housewives of Orange County. Um, she's an incredible businesswoman and a wonderful mom and grandma. And of course, she loves to whoop it up. So I can't wait to go talk to Vicki. So follow me over there now or anytime, really, with Anchor. See you there. Hey everyone, it's me, it's Nikki, how you doing? So we are here for our third podcast. Number three, we made it, we did it. The big three, I actually have a three tattoo. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. Um, so it's actually my favorite number, one of my favorite numbers. Um, it's been a number on my call sheet, yeah. So three, Vicki Gunvalson is here today and I am gonna bring her in right now. I can't wait to chat with my favorite OG housewife from the Real Housewives of Orange County. So let's bring in Vicki. Let's see if we can get the gallery going, gallery view. Hi! How you doing? Oh no, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Hold on, wait, I think I figured it out. Ah, did I do it? You are on mute and I just unmuted you. Nope. Okay. Here you are. Hi, how are you? Yay. Good, how are you? I'm good. So you're in the OC right now? What? What's up? You're in the OC right now? Yes. I just put down my blind. I've been having one heck of a day, so I'm just trying to squeeze everything in. Where are you guys at? I am in New York. Where are you? Oh. So I'm on Long Island. How's New York? It's okay. It's a little hectic. Um, everybody's kind of all over the place and just trying to, you know, hunker down and get through it. So are you guys not open at all? We're slowly opening now in Orange County. Slowly things are starting to open up. People are, you know, getting back to work, you know, yeah. little things, but nothing major. Okay. Just unbelievable how this has handicapped our entire world, you know? I know. And you, you sell insur- I mean, you have like the top insurance in Kodo, and if not in California, I mean, you sell life insurance. So you must be going up a wall. Yeah, I have. I have more folders than I care to talk about. I mean, it is just one thing on top of another. So underwriting is getting really um, very strict right now. So yeah. if you even have a little fever, um, they may or may not even insure you. And it could not, most likely is not, less than 0.5% of people will have this. So it, it's just becoming very hard on my business. So we had a lot of stuff in underwriting that is now on pause. Um, working 15 hours a day, you know, it's just, it's just really difficult. So, and with, you know, unless these places, cases place, we don't get paid. So it's yeah. commission only. It's, you could work, 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 and, and not make a paycheck. So it's, it's been a challenge. I, I can't even um, imagine, you know, and I, I always just respected you so much and just immensely because uh -huh. you are like the consummate like businesswoman, you, I mean, from the first episode, I was a Vicki Gunnelson, massive thing. Uh, thank you. I'm a bulldog and, um, you know, I have not laid off any of my staff and that has been a challenge to keep them all employed when there's no income coming in for them. So um, I'm doing it. Um, I'm ready for this whole thing to be flipping over. I know, to tell you the truth, I'm over it. I know. So I'm a worker, so I never really skipped a beat. I came to work every single day, even though nobody else was here. And, you know, I have a, you know, office that I pay $10,000 a month for. I'm not going to sit at home. I'm going to go to work. So it's a lot. It's a lot of stress. But it's okay. It's okay. It all works out. Yeah. I mean. So is, 
is this an audio? What are we doing? A, a, a so this video? is a podcast. It's basically, um, you know, anybody who goes on to Spotify or iTunes or wherever um, can listen to this and they're going to hear us talk about everything. So we're going to talk about obviously the Real Housewives, but I mean, we were just talking about your work and what I find so awesome is I was just doing my research and you actually started at your father's construction company, didn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. I used to do 300 paychecks every other week manually, wrote them out and delivered them to the job site. So I've always been somewhat of a math freak. Um, and I just like accounting and math. And I was a CPA without even being trained. I had to learn the hard way when you balanced your books, you know, a certain way. So for me, budgeting, balancing, I've got a new Facebook group and stuff. So anyway, it's, it's all good. So are we starting right now? We've been starting. Oh, this is my life. Where's the cameras? <laughs> I know. Trust me. My, Vicki, I haven't stopped for the past 14 years. It's like I, I, where am I? Where am I? What do I have to do now? Like, it's seriously like, what are we saying? It's dead. This is just it. This is just it. This is my life, right? Oh my God. What are we doing now? What do I have to do? Anyway, um, yeah, so I started with my dad and started construction doing numbers and became a single mother. And my girlfriend sold me life insurance when I was 26 years old on my soon to be ex husband. And I asked her what she made. In commission, she said $600. I'm like, I have to work a week and a half for my dad for that. And got my license, and there we go. That's incredible. I mean, and you actually, I mean, it, the first season of the OC Housewives, I mean, because you are the OG housewife. Like, you, if there was I have a, no like, problem with that anymore. <laughs> no, I mean, if there was, like, you know, the all-star, you are the all-star, you know? I mean... So I remember watching that and watching you build your company and just, and it's just grown. And I'm just, I'm so thrilled for you. Congratulations. It's, I just admire you a lot. Well, thank you. You know, it's, um, it's not for the easy, it's not for the weary. This business is strictly 100% commission. My son, as you know, Michael, um, he's 34 now and he's running my life insurance division. Wow. Wow. Whose puppy is that? That is my brother's moose. It's not a puppy. Okay. <laughs> I swear. She is so big, Vicki. She is about, and every time uh, anybody comes to the house, it's like World War III. She, oh you know, God. she's like half pit bull, half hound, but she is about 75 pounds. She'll stop eventually. I mean, I'll just take this outside because she's just, she's incredibly... If she's incredibly loud. I see. I used to have two pugs. I had two pugs, and I love pugs. Like, you have pugs. They yeah. don't talk. They don't. They don't make noise. They're the best breed ever. The best they breed. The best the breed. Breed. Rocky and Frankie never. None of this ever happened with them. Yeah, with you, her. You and Winnie. Oh, well, good. Grandma has Pete and Michael has Walter. So, I don't. I don't have any right now because I'm at work all the time. So, <laughs> anyways. I hear that. Um, well, you do have somebody, though, in your life at home, don't you, though? I do. So Steve and I met at a Boys and Girls Club charity event, and I was 10 months getting off of Brooks. Yeah. So I was like, the last thing I wanted to do was have a boy ask me to lunch. You know, I was like, leave me alone. I got this life. I'm good by myself. I got my kids. And, you know, I... I'm a marriage girl, but I don't, I have not been successful. My last two marriages obviously weren't, but I've been married 30 years. So there's some success for that, right? Absolutely. Um, 10 with Mike Absolutely. and 20 with Don. But um, so we're engaged. We don't have a date right now because I'm really crabby. So we're just kind of putting everything on pause. And he's like, when are, when are you going to get happy again? I'm like, when everybody goes back to work and everybody leaves me alone and we all get life back to normal. And I can go out with my girlfriends because I love my girlfriends. I want to I want to whoop it up. So I know. I love when yeah. you say that on the show. I that in your love tank, I swear, the best things ever. I know. I told them the other night that my love tanks was getting empty. He goes, You have a hole in it. I said, That's what John <laughs> used to say. I'm like, he's like, Stop comparing me to Don, you know. Uh, I oh my, I mean. 
he seems so wonderful and I'm just so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. You When you run a business like that, when you run a business like that and me, you know, not even not on that level in a different business though, when you have that level of success, sometimes it can be a little intimidating, I guess, for people when we're trying to date. Have you found that? Well, yeah. Um, so he was super successful when he worked. He was a homicide detective and policeman for 30 years and then went into politics. So he's on a pause button right now. And so if I come home from work at nine or 10 o'clock at night, you know, tonight I'll get home at, when it's dark out. Yeah. And I'll be like, what'd you do today? And he's like, when you ask me that question, I feel inferior to you because you're running, you're moving mountains. And I said, okay, note to self, I will not ask you what you did for the day, but it's a common, like just conversation. But I yeah. know he's, he's busy. He's doing things he's on a board of directors, he's, but he's not as busy as me. I mean, he could sleep in, wake up whenever he wants. He has dinner usually ready when I get home. I just have to text him and it's 30 minutes later, but uh, you know, this is my breakfast, lunch, and dinner usually. It's a protein shake all day long. Yeah. Um, I should be itty bitty skinny, but I'm not. Um, so I try to do my Peloton when I get home for a half hour, but my life is not normal. And he says, sometimes he's like, you know, trying to chase the rabbit. Like, where, where am I now? And I'm like, well, I'll be back in 10 minutes. You know, I'll be back in two hours, like head to the office. It's like, nobody's working. I'm like, I'm working. What am I going to do if I don't work? You know? Yeah. So the thought of retiring doesn't really feel appealing. Um, and I'm 58 now. Um, but I started a podcast and I just heard Joe Rogan sold his for like a hundred million dollars to Spotify today. So I'm like, okay, there's hope for Nikki Gumbelson. Oh my God, Nancy, take me. <laughs> right? Take us. So yeah, I was like, I never even heard, know who Joe Rogan is and I've never listened to his podcast, but I'm like, whatever he could do, I could do better. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you have to have that mentality. You know, it's yeah. a dog eat dog world out there. And you know, I'm from New York, you're from Chicago. We're from tough cities, you know, and we get out to places like LA or other places where maybe they're not used to like a, a strong, tough chick that a just has a statement. Right. I probably don't fit in very well with the women because they got their hands out, you know, yeah. what are you going to do for me lately? Right. So yeah. I slap those hands. <laughs> get yeah, out of my way. It. I love it. I love it. You're like, you put your, your keys in there for the valet. You're like, here, valet my car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I you just gotta sometimes just set people straight, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, so one of my favorite episodes was you with you with, was in Jamaica, Vicky, though. Oh my gosh. On the bobsleds, I was dying. How fast oh God, did those things crazy. go? Those were so fast. I lost my beautiful brand new Gucci sunglasses. I was so mad. But the end of the day, I got those for a Christmas present from Steve in December. And we were there like in February. And I'm like, my glasses. No. Um, because I don't really spend a lot of money on expensive things like that. But he bought them for me and I lost them. So that was a good memory. It was so hot there. So, so, so hot. The bobsleds were so fast. And I think I unloaded on that bartender in the shack about my love tank and how how it gets empty. She's like, you oh, read okay. right. And, and that was it, huh? I know. That was so fun. It was I fun. That, it. That's what I'm going to miss about the housewives. We had some incredible trips, some places that I would have never gone to, you know, Ireland and Iceland and Bali and Morea and just incredible trips. So that's going to, that's going to be hard not to go on those anymore. I mean, I could do it myself, but it's not the same, you know? Yeah, it's a totally different thing. You know, I, I feel that way with, you know, if I were to go and travel the world, sure, it's going to be fun. But when I did it for my Hairspray Press Tour and you do it with somebody that you, you know, I did it with Zac Efron. And when you get to do that, you share these experiences. And, you know, unless you were there oh. on the trip, people don't really know, you know, so it's oh. really cool. I know. Is it snowing there? No, those are like some weird, like little bugs. I don't know what they are. Those are bugs. They're like weird little flies. I don't know. Oh, we need to move. We don't have bugs in California. We I think my dog bugs. has has now uh, quieted down because my mother is making meatballs, so she knows if she's good. Ooh. She knows if she's good. I love missing meatballs. 
I love me some meatballs. What's a go-to um, cook that you, a dish that you like to cook at home? You know what, lately I have been so confused on what to eat because I'm doing way too much research on where our meat comes from. And so Brianne and Ryan live in North Carolina and they do all the keto. So they make sure that they get their meat from a certain farm and their eggs from the neighbor's backyard. And there's, and I was looking at the stuff around in our grocery stores, our eggs are 30 days old, you know? So it's just, I, I don't know what to eat anymore, truly. Like Steve made me egg salad yesterday. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But I don't know. I love meatballs. I love spaghetti. I love lasagna. But those are also like, you can't eat that every day. Um, I, when, I, I'll tell you, my mom's chicken parm has won me. Like, I can't tell you. Somebody, so I- Did she bread the chicken? Yes. Yes. She like- yes. Oh, it. so good. Oh, please. It's insane. I mean, does, I, your mom, does your mom live with you? I live with my whole family, actually. Nice. Oh, it's nice. a affair. I mean, sometimes I wish I lived alone. I'm not going to lie. But yeah. So is that like your brothers and like a, who is in your family that you're I, all living? So I have a 26 year old brother, um, Joey. And so he. Um, he actually, he works for the government and he's a great kid. Um, way taller than me, of course, who isn't, I'm only four foot 10. Um, he, yeah, he's my big brother. He's about six, two. And then wow. my mom and my dad and the dog and his girlfriend. And, you know, it's a family, a big party over here sometimes. Does it work? It, does it work for everybody? Sometimes. I'm not going to lie. You know, sometimes I want to rip my hair out and, you know, send them for long walks off a short pier. But, yeah. you know, but other times I sit there and I say, how lucky am I to live with, you know, three people that I love more oh than that. Amen to that. So yeah. I wish I could live with my brother and my parents, but my parents are gone and my brother is in Florida now. So, but life just brings us in all different paths. Yes. I mean, I remember seeing him on the show. He is a trip. I don't know how he hasn't gotten his own show, Vicky. Billy is, seriously, when I'm with him, I, we're tearing down laughing so hard. He is so much fun. He's got such a great outlook on life, and he's my biggest supporter. If I called him right now and said, Billy, I need you to get on a plane and be here for me. He's like, where, where do I need to be? Where are we? Like, he's so, we're so connected. Him, Lisa, and my sister Lisa is 13 months younger than me. So the three of us, and then my two older sisters, Kathy and Kim, they were adopted um, babies, like a couple days old. My mom didn't think she could have children, and she had me, Lisa, and Billy. So she ended up with five children. We're all super close, super, super close. So um, we got a great family, you know, great German, middle America, hardworking. You know, there's no handouts. My brother and my sister and I all own our own businesses. So we're, we just, my, my father always taught me, you control your own paycheck, you will control your own life. And he said, you be an employer, not an employee. And at a very young age, I knew I was going to be my own boss. I didn't know what I was going to be. You know, I don't know, maybe the boss in my own house. I don't know. But for me, it wasn't an option to work for anybody because I probably wouldn't listen to him anyway. Um, so I like, I like building, creating companies. I like having great staff. I like having mentors and I'm driven by that. That is my, that is my drive. It's I want to be a better advisor every day. I want to be a better insurance agent. I want my staff to be the best. I mean, we get awards all day long of just our customer service, my staff. I reward them well, even in this COVID I'm giving them bonuses and they're like, are you kidding me? I'm like, yeah, you get a bonus because you're not sitting on unemployment. And they could have, they could have furloughed and they could have gone on employment. He said, you go on employment, your job probably won't be here because the government doesn't want our employees to go on employment. They want we as employers to employ our staff, keep them busy so they don't have to go on employment. It's going to be a huge issue when all these lazy people go on employment and then what's going to, what's the, what is our economy going to be? You know, a bunch of lazy people not wanting to work, you know? I know in certain circumstances they have to, but if I am an employer, I want to keep my staff employed if they're good people, you know? So that was my responsibility well, as an employer. You know? I can lay them off. Some people just have that innate drive and that innate passion 
for work or whatever they do. And like people will say to me all the time, when do you want to retire? I said, retire. I want to drop dead on a movie set, you know, like, let me go out doing what I love. I and, that. you know, it's, it's just, it doesn't feel like work when you do what you love, but sometimes it does. But I mean, with what you do, I mean, it's got to be incredibly hectic right now. Um, I can't even imagine but I, I give you all the credit in the world. And, you know, you just, you run a tight ship, Vicki Gunnelson, let me tell you. So let me go back to times when I was filming. So they yeah. used to give me my day of schedule, like what I was going to film for the day or the week. And I would have workshops or seminar client meetings or my staff would have my calendar booked and they could see my calendar and they would say, block her out for two hours on Tuesday because that's the only time I had available. So I was still holding my company. Other people were saying, sell your company, get out of it. Don't do it anymore. You've got the housewife show. And I'm thinking, what if housewives ever goes away? I have to keep my business. So the struggle of those two was really difficult because I was the only one that really went to work every single day. And then 90% of the time I went on set and I didn't get my hair and makeup done. I was not ready and I was looking like a disaster. And I'm like, okay, what do you want? What do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? You know? <laughs> so, and it was, it was a challenge, but now that I just have this, I'm missing that filming too. Though. It had to have been a lot as a working mom too. And now your grandma. Yeah. My grandma's <laughs> pregnant with number three. Congratulations! That's so exciting. Oh, no, I'm so excited. So my little boys are up there, and I, um, they write me letters. I love you, Nana, and I'm like, they're the reason why I do what I do. Right yeah, there. those two buddies. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, I have a 12 year old goddaughter, and when people ask me why I started yeah. this podcast, I tell them because I want to show her that anything is possible if you work hard enough, if you want something, whatever it is, go for it. You don't know unless you try. So I think you're doing that for your grandson, do you know? Yeah. Amen. So how do you, how often do you uh, tape your podcast? I do it uh, five days a week. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I'm a workaholic. I want to work. If I'm not working, my mind is all over. And then I start thinking about things I can't control. And that doesn't help me any. I know. So how do you do it with the, uh, the video? Do you do a video podcast? So this now will go up. So my publicist, Diana, is so great. She uploads it to YouTube. And then, but this will be audio just on Spotify. So when people are listening to this in their car, they can hear it. But they'll nice. see us on YouTube. Good. good, good. Well, I'm learning this whole podcast thing because the Whoop It Up with Vicky, I think we're in like 10 episodes right now. I only do it one day a week because I'm like, what do I have to talk about the other, you know, six? And they're like, your life is crazy. You know, but what do you talk about for? We talk about everything. We talk about traveling, which we were just talking about some of the incredible places you've gotten to travel in with the housewives. But I want to know, you know, who's, who was a mentor for you that kind of really, you know, whether it be, you know, getting into the housewives or just somebody who really, you know, because I had a mentor that, helped me a lot in school and get to where I've gotten. Who's been that for you? Well, my dad's gone. He's in heaven, but um, he always is my mentor. My mom and dad were incredible parents. I was raised in a perfect home. When I look back on my childhood, people would say, oh, I had this problem and this problem. No, my, mine was absolutely perfect. We grew up very privileged. Financially, my father made a lot of money, but he, we never knew it as children. We were how to go to work at 14. We paid our own car payment. We bought our own gas. We bought our own prom dresses. Um, but we had the biggest house. And my mom had the nicest cars and, you know, furs, if you like furs or not. Uh, second home, boats and cabins. And But we were hard working family. So he's my mentor. I want to show my children, my grandchildren, and my peers that you can reap the rewards of your hard work. Um, yourself. You don't have to have your hand out. You can work hard. You can get the life that you want because we got one shot at this life. <laughs> you know, That's it. If you marry for money, you're going to pay for it one way or another. You know, hey, so, let me tell you, I was engaged once. Okay. I could have settled. I didn't, you know, it yeah. would have been very easy for me to say, okay, I'm going to let him handle the bills and I'm going to let him Absolutely not. I had a career way no way. 
came along. It wasn't about to end. And guess what? It was there after he cheated on me. So no. you know, what can you do? There's no way I would let a man take over my bills, tell me what to buy, what not to buy. I wrote a book my first couple of years on the housewives. It was called More Than a Housewife, and it was a Costco story. Have you ever heard about this story? So I married Don Gunvalson, um, and I was 32 years old, and I moved to California from Illinois. So for me, I was going to live the dream. He was 10 years older than me making a lot more money than I was selling insurance. So I thought, okay, I married up. He's like, we'll have more kids. You don't have to work. Life is good. And Michael Brandon were seven and eight. So I'm like, finally, I can be a mother to my children. Yeah. And I went to Costco. And it was the first time I had ever been in a Costco because in Illinois, we didn't have them. So I went to Costco and I remember my girlfriend going with me and she's like, you got to go to the store. You can buy everything there. You can buy food. You can buy car tires. You can buy basketballs. You can buy lawn equipment like you can buy anything at the store I'm like I am going and I got my credit card and I am going and we had been married three weeks and I remember he got me this lime green or evergreen green van with the sliding door and the paneling on the side I was so cool it was like a toaster oven and I remember opening the doors to get all this stuff out in the driveway and he pulled up right behind me home early from work and he's like, what is all this stuff? And I'm like, oh my God, I found the best place in the whole world. I got corn dogs, I got chicken, I got vegetables, I got lollipops, I got ice cream, I got everything. I, could, I got stuff for the new pool, like I got everything. And he looked at me and goes, we don't shop like this. And, and I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, you don't work anymore. Remember, I'm gonna take care of the family and we don't shop like this. I buy frozen pizzas and tuna fish and we just eat very lean in this family. I'm like, no, I'm a cook. I'm always going to cook. I'm always going to bake. And I called my dad. I said, I married the wrong guy. I said, this is devastating. We had a horrible fight that night. He's like, I want a divorce. And I'm like, no, we're not getting divorced, but I'm going to shop. I'm not going to not shop. And my father said, you married a great guy. Just go get your insurance license in California. And always remember the story, Vicki, the Costco story. And I said, okay. And I went and hit my, my goal in my mind was two years to make more than what he was making. So he never had to tell me I couldn't go to Costco again. And it took about two to three years before I finally hit it. And I was getting awards and getting recognized. And he was an executive with Home Depot and super proud of his career. And I said, listen to me, we don't need a commingled money. You're a single man married for the first time at 42. I get it. I wasn't being disrespectful, but I've got two children. And I like nice stuff. And I'm going to go to Puerto Vallarta when I want. And I want to go to Costco probably once a month. And I don't ever want you getting mad at me. And he said, fair enough, good compromise. But it was that moment that I knew I could never be dependent upon a man. Do you know how many women have to put up with going to Costco or going to Nordstrom's or wherever they go and hiding their packages? No. I mean, I, you know, I've seen... I, I hate to say it, I've seen Lifetime movies where this there have been this like plot line that it's like led to these like big blow, I, you know, I'm not kidding. I mean, shopping, I grew up in a very um, affluent area. I grew up in Great Neck, which Great Neck is basically um, where the Great Gatsby was filmed. Uh, the Gatsby estate is there. So mm -hmm. it's literally, it's so expensive, Vicky. I mean, houses with elevators in them on the water. I mean, stunning fancy. homes. Very fancy. I did not grow up in that area. I grew up five minutes down the road where my mom and dad both worked two jobs and I got a job babysitting at like 12 and I worked and then I got a job, a part-time job at a Cold Stone and I was there until I got hairspray. So when you have that work ethic and you know what it's like to get up every day and have a reason and, and, when there's a greater purpose, you know, and when people teach you a work ethic, I think that could take you, as Edna Turnblad says, all the way to the bank, you know? Right, right, I know. But I, but I, you know, I think it's all how your, your mind is. If you want to be dependent upon somebody, then you succumb to that. And that's your normal. I could, you and I couldn't. I mean, I need to have my own pocketbook. I need to have my own money. And, you know, I told Steve Gariana, if you want to get married, just so you know, 
you have your four kids, I have my two kids, you have three or five grandkids, I have my three. Like, we, we don't need to commingle money. And he's like, I'm good with that. Like, he's got his pension, I got my money. Like, we don't have to commingle. And I think that as you mature in age, when you start commingling in your 50s and 60s, that could be a recipe for disaster too. So I'm learning as I go along how to weather this new normal, but I'm probably very unusual for a lot of women around here in Orange County. You know, when those the, the, that sun sets behind me, it's dark in here and I'm here hailing the world. You know, I'm trying to figure out how to help people and what I can do and how to make my podcast successful and what I can do you know, every single day that the Lord gives me to be a better person. Because sometimes on my show in the households, I did not show really who I am. I mean, I was screaming and yelling all the time because everybody pissed me off. You know? We all have our moments. Hey, let me tell you, I haven't always had my finest day in the sun. They bug know? me. When they lie about me, they bug me. So I'm going to yell at them. Of course. Of course. I right? would too. You know, you can't help no. it. That's got to be tough. I mean, does you ever forget that you're on camera? I mean, you do, but you don't. And you know that if somebody's poking the bear and then they expect you to lay down, like, oh yeah, just call me a liar. Call me, I was in on a cancer scam or whatever they wanted to throw at me. No, I'm going to defend myself. Because yeah. when they lie about me, I'm going at them, you know? You so, have to. Yeah. You got to stand your ground. I mean. It's always my best of moments, girl. <laughs> we all have them. Trust me. We all have them. <laughs> I mean, who has been somebody that you, I always find this fascinating when you do shows or like I've, I've done movies and people that I have like looked up to or whatever I've met through this business and they have been a fan of like something I've done. How, who has been that for you? Has somebody told you they've been a fan of Housewives that you were just a massive fan of uh, already? Um, I think one of the fun things was Chloe Mor Morantz. I don't know how you say her last name. She's an actress. Oh, Chloe Grace Moretz. Yes. So she, she, her and I were on Watch What Happens Live a couple years ago. And she was like, my mom loves you and I love you. And I'm like, I don't even know who you are because yeah. I don't watch movies. So anyway, I researched her. I'm like, okay, I know who you are, you know, but that was really fun for me to see. She said, you know, I look up to you because she's a lot younger. And um, it was just very inspiring to see this role that I have on some people, you know, this influence. Yes, see the joys of the dark. It's the it's the home studio. So the thing, these like lights here are on a timer. Oh, so they just crap out and decide to take a nap in the middle of uh, us talking about Chloe. That's really cool. I mean, there are so many. Just I find that entertainment. There's so many avenues, and you get to reach people that you don't even necessarily would know that. You know, there are some people that I'm like. You even know that I was breathing? You know? I know. Like Rita Wilson, her and I were on a Watch What Happens Live, and she's like, Tom and I love you. I'm like, Tom Hanks? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Tom Hanks, that's just, you know, like I was, like we just booked um, Sting's daughter on my show, and she's going to be on. And I said to my publicist, I said, well, if she goes and tells her parents that she's going to be on the show, that means she's telling Sting that she's going to be on my show. Right. I mean, I was like, that's just, that blows my mind. Oh, it's a fun oh, circle with all the different, you are like, your light is going like this. Like you're like in a straight light. I have to back outside again because that's the only place with a light. This is ridiculous. Well, you need to upgrade your studio. I need, I know, I need a whole new studio. Or really, I just need one of those, um, I need to just get like one of those cameras that like comes over my head. So it's just like a lot. You're killing me. Okay. If you are <laughs> going to do podcasts for a living, you need to step up your game, girl. You I need will. To get, I am taking the ladder out of the background. You need to get the washer out of the back. You need to get a nice drape box behind you that with your big name and your big logo. I need this logo. podcast to be a success so that I can get the money to do that. You will. You will, girl. Just let me tell you. And you I know, have. that's another thing. You know, when everybody thinks, you know, you do a movie, you're a multimillionaire. Absolutely not. You know, you have to pay your dues. I know you do. You have to pay your dues. And it's a, speaking of ladders, it's a tough ladder to climb. The Hollywood ladder is, um, it's not as, uh, as, as 
glitter drawn and as rainbow driven as people make it seem. It's really not, but it's, it's so incredibly fun. Have you found that it's been a, a really fun journey? My podcast? Or just, podcast and just being an entertainment period, you know. The podcast has been a little bit of a struggle for me to tell you the truth because I don't know what people want to listen to. And so I'm not a I'm not one that listens to podcasts because I'm so busy all the time. I don't even have yeah. the radio on 90% of the time. Um, and I never watch TV. So for me, I'm like, what do my listeners want to hear about? Is it just the housewives? Is it more finance? So I'm trying to wiggle my way through to be the voice of reason in this midst of storms that we get in, whether it's divorce or abuse or um, tomorrow we're having a gentleman on that talks about relationship. Um, and you know, when it's good to get out of a bad relationship, I said, I should have known you four years ago, but you know, you stick in cause you want it. You've got the time there and you want to, you want to make it better. So I kept saying, okay, well, what do we need to do to make this relationship better? Because I didn't want to give up. I didn't want to be the one that, People were telling me, you told me so. So I was all in. When I was with Brooks, I was all in. And yeah. the sun rose and set with that guy. And the whole time he was scamming me. And I didn't see it till it was over. Um, so I think through my podcast, what I want to do is teach people to look for the gut signs. You know, when I looked at back in my relationship, there were many nights I cried myself to sleep because I couldn't figure out what was going on. Yeah. And why he wouldn't be honest with me. And he was telling me he was being honest, but he wasn't. So for me, I think the thing is you follow your gut. We're all going to get in relationships, whether it's girlfriend relationships, sibling relationships, parent relationships. If you're in a toxic relationship and you can't get out of it, there's 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 a reason why there's something going wrong. Well, also what I notice is people love to project and tell you what you should do in your relationship. Yep. And well, well, if I was you, I would do this. Guess what, Louise in Kentucky? You're not me. You're not. And mm -hmm. I appreciate you caring and I appreciate you wanting what's best for me. But sometimes you have to learn the hard way or you have to learn things for yourself. I am a person. I have to learn things for myself. Yeah, nobody's going to tell me or you what to do. Like I have to know that the decision I made rests back on me. I was the only one that got hurt in that relationship. I don't know if you saw all that or not, but nobody else got hurt. It was me. And, you know, everybody wants to say, well, you did a scam. Who did I scam? I was scammed, you know? So, so when anybody says that to me, I'll go like ballistic because I'm like, there was no scam on yeah. others. It was on me. And that's where I get really defensive on myself. I'm like, you weren't laying that night next to him saying, he was saying, baby, we got this. I love you so much. We got this. And I'm like, okay. You know? Yeah, I know. Mr. Mr. Mississippi man had me from hello. I was like, oh my gosh. So. Hey, I dated a guy from Louisiana, Vicki. I know that accent will get you every cool. time. I know. <laughs> well, you learn, you, you, learn, the best of us. you, you pick up, move on. you move yeah. on. You have a great guy now. You have a, an incredible family. I mean, your grandsons are just spectacularly beautiful. Oh, I know my little Troy and Ona. What's one of your favorite things to do with them? You know what? When I get there, which Brianna's not letting me get there right now because of the yeah. COVID, she doesn't want me to get sick and then give it to her. Um, when I get there, we just hide upstairs. We order food from Brianna. She delivers it to us. And we do everything. We play Uno and Monopoly and board games and watch movies on my computer. And they can order whatever they want on Amazon. And they do. Um, Troy knows how to get into my code, write in my code. And he's just <laughs> fills up the shopping cart. What do you think of this, Nana? And it's usually under 100 bucks. I'm like, go for it, Troy. Press, press buy now. And yeah, then, knock yeah. yourself out. Yeah. Two days later, they're like, all the packages keep arriving. Brio's like, Mom, what did you do? I'm like, you know that I'm going to do this when they're here, like they're, whatever they want. So I'd be spending more on them if they were here anyway. So, and if it gives us a little fun together, they, they look forward to the stuff that, you know, grandmas can do, you know, hundred bucks isn't going to kill me, but Brad's like, you're spoiling them. I said, yes, I am. Yes, I am spoiling them. And that's my job. Yeah. And that's your prerogative you know and you know they are your grandchildren and you have every single right to spoil yeah. them and they idolize you i can tell and, you know um, you know Brie, my, yeah, I just wanna, I, 
she's still working as a nurse at night being pregnant. So she's on the front lines with the COVID and she's busy working. And the other day I said, what can I do for you? I like, I want to help you out. And she's like, it's just a lot of grocery shopping, this and that. So I sent her a thousand dollar Costco card the other day. Mm-hmm. And she's like, mom, this is huge. This is two months of groceries. I'm like, I don't know what else to do, but yeah. you know, I, I feel like, I feel like I'm not there to help physically. So I want to be there to, to lean on for them, you know? And she didn't want it. She's like, I'm returning. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's a gift. Like a gift is a gift. You don't return gifts. So yeah. she's very prideful. She likes to, you know, not ask for anything. And well, you raise good kids, Vicky. And what are you kidding? Are you kidding? I mean, I've seen them on the show and Michael just cracks me up. I mean, he just seems like he goes to the beat of his own drum. Oh my God, he does. <laughs> I he love it. bugged at me. I did something wrong. Like, Mom, I'm like, okay, I know I messed up. Okay, whatever. <laughs> but you raise them right and they are fine young people and you should be very proud of yourself. You know, and um, I just, I'm just so thrilled that of the housewives how what it's brought you i mean you are by far i think one of the most loved housewives of all time so why did they fire me what do you think vicky why does anybody do something stupid i think it was over my antics and i probably got too old i probably got too old i probably got too expensive and there we go who knows we'll never know but What was we is that you started in the first season of a franchise that now is epic and legendary and you by far are like the most, I mean, if people, you know, all you have to say is whoop it up and everybody knows. Oh, I know. So hopefully they'll remember that, but that's going to be my little appetite and my whoop it up podcast and, you know, whoop it up. We've got glasses and t-shirts and fun stuff in our store and just like, whatever, you know, I'm all about like, Whatever, like if you're mad at me tomorrow, like get get happy again and just whoop it up. It's like okay. <laughs> this is a question that I like to end with that always remind that actually reminds me of the saying whoop it up because it has it's just it's fun. If you go out and you're having a few cocktails with friends and you want to loosen up and whoop it up, what's your go to karaoke song? Oh my god, I do not karaoke. I do not sing and I do not know how to do it. So no. But I, in my heart of hearts, I'm a country western singer. Like I love me some Toby Keith. He's he's a dear friend of our families, and so I, I love Toby Keith. So I will try to sing whatever he sings, but I don't know how to sing. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, okay. I just music. I play it all day long. Oh, you do? I'm actually writing a book now, and I just listen to like I'm listening to '60s doo-wop and just uh-huh. playing it all day. Nice. Yeah, I have to have my office totally quiet in order for me to concentrate. I'm like, what's that noise over there? Who's 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 humming? It's like they're like who's breathing down the block. Yeah. Who's making a noise? Who's clicking a pen? They're like, no, nobody was clicking a pen. I'm like, don't click pens. Don't make any noise. <laughs> I love it. Well, Vicky Gunvalson, you, you make all the noise you want over there in Orange County. You hear me? Yep. Don't and I'm gonna get my studio in order. I promise you. Don't forget to whoop it up, girl. I will. I'm going to make you proud with my studio. Do it. No washer and dryer behind you. No ladder. I want a backdrop with a light to shine on your beautiful face. (laughs) Thank you. Okay? And you have me back on in a couple months, and let me know how it goes. You bet your bottom dollar that. I'm going to hold you accountable for that. Oh, you know it. Oh, you know the first thing I'm doing when I get off this podcast is going on Amazon and looking at backdrops. Yeah, you can get a you can get a white sheet. Just do something. I will. It Vicky, does not look I like adore us. you. Okay, lean on me if you need any help. Oh, you know I will. Okay, have a great day. And okay. thank you for uh, doing okay. all you're doing right now and you're helping welcome. everyone. You're welcome. Take care. Take care of you. Okay, bye. 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 Yes, I am going to get my studio in order. I promise you that. I am. I am. I am ashamed. Actually, no, I'm not. You know, you guys know me. It takes a lot to, to, uh, to shake this tree. But um, I was like, first the dog. And then, but honestly, you guys, that's the joy of, of running a podcast from home. And it's the, the never ending, what's going to happen next? Who's going to walk through? Um, uh, you know, and I think that's kind of what adds the charm. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to 
say what adds charm to my own podcast because I'm not like that. But um, I think, you know, that's the excitement I want to say really is you never know uh, what dog's going to bark and what uh, nonsense is going to be happening here in Blonsky land. But Vicki Gunvalson, thank you so much. You're so incredibly insightful and um, so smart. And I've always looked up to Vicki because she is just that badass, you know, woman who just goes to the beat of her own drum. Like I said about her son, Michael, she has created an empire for herself and I just respect her so much. So Vicki Gunvalson, I adore you. I, my studio is going to be in honor of you. I promise that. It will be the Vicki Gunvalson studio for Nikki Nights. Um, it's dedicated. I want a plaque and everything. I'm not even kidding. Vicki, I adore you. Thank you so much. And thank you for all you're doing right now, making sure people are insured and healthy and, uh, and taken care of in this time. You're an exceptional woman. You guys, this podcast is incredibly fun. I'm having the time of my life. Anchor is an incredible app, and doing this podcast has brought me so much closer to you, and um, I'm so thrilled that I get to be in your cars and in your living rooms and wherever you are playing this podcast, on iTunes or Spotify, wherever. Thank you for letting me into your lives 14 years ago, and thank you for letting me stay. I hope you have a great night. Um, thanks for hanging in there with us. We'll be hanging out with you here at Nikki Nights. We have an incredible lineup coming up, you guys, and of course, our 100th episode is going to be the incredible, the one, the only, the legendary Lainey Kazan. Um, and that's going to be July 20th for the 15th anniversary of Hairspray. Can you believe it's been 15 years, guys? Where did the time go? It just seemed like yesterday I was 17, making Hairspray, living the dream. And guess what? Here I am 14 years later, um, living the dream still going every day harder and more passionate towards a goal. And um, I truly believe that anything is attainable. So you guys, I wish you well. Thanks for joining me here on Nikki Nights. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. You know I will. Bye.